You want to cook the perfect brisket just like this? Look how juicy this brisket is. All the fat on the outside is fully rendered and tender, and look at the juice running out of the inside. You're going to start with a full packer brisket, and let me show you how I trimmed up mine. Before you can even trim, we need to pick the right brisket though. I recommend getting a prime grade if you can find it and afford it. Definitely worth the extra money. Next, give it the bend test. You want one that you can bend pretty easily and isn't too stiff. That means the fat's not too hard on it. Next, look for an even brisket, one that's relatively even in thickness from end to end. They're never going to be even though. That point is always going to be a lot thicker than the flat. Let's get this opened up and we'll start trimming. I like to flip it over and start on this side here. I'm going to start off by cutting off the part of the flat which is too thin and is going to dry out for sure when we cook it. Don't worry, none of this is going to go to waste. We're saving all this. More about that later. You can see that's pretty thin but it does have decent marbling. Next, we're going to cut this corner off here to make it a little bit more round and even looking. Finally, I like to see which way the grain's going and make a cut so when I'm slicing the brisket, I follow that cut I just put in that corner. I like to work my way around this brisket, trimming off what I see that I don't like. You don't need a lot of fat on the outside because there's plenty on the inside and that fat is going to block the rub from sticking and seizing the meat and the smoke from getting in. So don't be afraid. If you've got a prime brisket, go ahead and trim it. I would say if you've only got a choice or select, you might want to leave a little bit more of that external fat, but this brisket had plenty of internal marbling. We don't need all this external fat. Now let's get rid of this brown bit on the outside. This oxidation is normal. I believe it's from cleaning the carcasses or something like that. Don't quote me, but I believe that's where it came from. I think I learned that on YouTube. Whatever it's from, it's not good eats. So let's go ahead and get rid of it. Set that aside and we'll keep going. Back to the fat cap side. Look at this big ugly thing on top. We're going to go ahead and get this off because it's definitely not going to cook evenly. There is some lean meat in this, but by the time we get done cooking, I think that's going to be dried out. So we'll take that off. When I trim meat, I like to use my hands and feel and just make sure there's no bits of bone or cartilage or anything like that. When it comes to the fat cap side, I like to remove all the fat from the point end because there's so much fat inside that meat, you don't need any extra. And it's also quite a bit thicker. So the more fat we take off, the more we can help that cook and get all the way rendered without the flat getting overcooked and dry because there's nothing worse than dry lean beef. Look at this big hunk of fat here. We're going to carve this out because this will never render. There's always a massive hunk of fat that sits in between the point and the flat. You don't have to take it all out because it goes all the way through, but you're going to just go ahead and slice some off each side, help to make it cook more evenly. That's the whole point of this trim really is to get it cooked evenly. Just going to keep working our way around, trimming everything up, getting these edges even, taking off any oxidized bits, anything that doesn't look like good eats, just keep trimming it off. Here's a good tip for you. Put your hand underneath the meat and lift it up a little bit. This will make it easier to carve off the fat cap without gouging out the meat. When we get to the flat part, we're going to try to take off just the very outside layer of the fat cap. This fat on the outside is really tough and almost rubbery, but underneath is that nice soft fat. So you want to take off as little as possible when it comes to the flat. This knife is really dull. I really should have sharpened this before I trimmed this video, but let me know. I got a couple ways of sharpening knives. I can go ahead and make a video on that if you want. Another trick which you might have seen me do is scraping the meat with my knife. This helps to even it out. And this is where I get tired of that dull knife and switch back to my boning knife. Much better. Now we're going to go around and clean up anything else that we missed and clean up some of those jagged edges my dull knife left. Here's another big hunk of fat we found. So let's go ahead and carve a little bit of that out. You can see there's absolutely no meat in this, so you're not going to miss it. And look how much more fat is left right behind it. I don't trim briskets every day, so what I like to do is just keep taking it a little bit at a time because you can never put that fat back on. So if you gouge it too deep, you're going to regret it. So just keep working your way around. It doesn't matter how long it takes you if you're only trimming a couple briskets. Squaring off that edge, again, more jagged from my dull knife. Do yourself a favor, start with a sharp knife. Don't be like me. This end here looks a little ugly to me, so we're going to go ahead and cut that off. Doesn't look like good eats. Flip it over. Now it's kind of square, so we're going to round it back off so it cooks evenly. A little bit of lean in there, don't worry. We're going to save that. Here it is, all done. Let's see how much it weighs now that we've trimmed it. We started with about 19 pounds. I don't know if you're going to be able to see the scale or not, 
but it's reading around 13 and a half pounds. So we did lose a lot, but again, we're not wasting it. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button, thumbs up, go over to Instagram, give me a follow at Rusty BBQ Lamb. Wait till you see the next video. We're going to turn this leftover scraps into some delicious eats.